Joining me now is retired four-star Army General, our friend Barry McCaffrey. So, General, how could these cluster munitions affect the fighting? Because it's acknowledged by President Zelensky the counteroffensive is going slowly. It's very tough, very flat terrain. The, the Russians were very well defended, dug in. And this is a slow, a slow slog, and they say they need them desperately. Well, look, there's no question there's a dud problem with the DPICM munitions. Uh, whether it's 3 percent, which we're claiming publicly or higher, uh, it remains a problem not just to civilians, but to dismounted infantry. Sure. We had casualties in Desert Storm from Air Force DPICM. So it is a, it is a problem. Uh, the Ukrainians are fighting for their survival. We apparently are going to send them around 100,000 rounds or more of DPICM. We've got a stockpile of around 3 million. We plan on using these munitions if North Korea attacks the South. That's why we're not a signatory to the treaty. And I think the Ukrainians in their own country are saying, look, we'll map this. Uh, we'll clean it up after the war. But they're probably four times more effective against Russian artillery than unitary rounds are. And they also knock out light armor. So I think uh, President Biden, Lloyd Austin, and Blinken were entirely correct uh, to send them these munitions, not just as a stopgap for unitary warheads, but because they are a very effective tool and Ukraine's fighting for its survival. Do you think that Ukraine can now get any advantage by what is acknowledged to be some disarray on the Russian side? As we read today, again, more reporting that uh, Putin is going after some of the generals. He's trying to weed out those who may have supported the mini-rebellion a couple of weeks ago. You know, you sort of go back in your own mind to when Stalin died and the Politburo calls in Berea and they duck walk him out in the courtyard and shoot him. It's short of that problem. But we have never seen public criticism, not just by Prashigan, who, by the way, the words that can never be unsaid were, the war against Ukraine was a fraud. NATO right. wasn't the problem. Uh, they're not Nazis. Uh, we were doing it for corrupt purposes. Uh, and now to see the Russian active duty military, including some of their allegedly hotshot generals, getting fired, detained, disappearing. You know, where is the chief of the Russian Air Force? He's disappeared. Uh, Putin doesn't know who in the security forces are going to support him. GRU, FSB. Uh, National Guard, the active military. He's cautiously failing his way now. And bringing it back to home again, let me take you to Alabama and Senator Tuberville's stand against the Pentagon's policies on reproductive care for military you know, to go off base and get paid uh, for abortions and other reproductive health care. So that has now been adapted and it's now embedded as an amended in the just passed defense authorization bill on the House side. It's going to go over to the Senate. So this whole debate is going to be broadened with other issues. Um, what do you say to the senators and the House members who've now put social policy um, demands, requirements into the defense bill? They know exactly what they're doing. Uh, in past decades, literally, we never held up the defense bill. It got sorted out in the House Armed Services Committee, Senate Armed Services Committee. It's legitimate political issues. They get to vote on it. But we should not involve the defense of America in, in what are, uh, you know, political struggles going on in the halls of Congress. So Tuberville had better change his ways. He's harming U.S. national security, not just families moving schools. This is much higher order than that. When you go to a conference and you don't have a commandant of the Marine Corps to interface their international counterparts, we got a problem. And it's accelerating now. Soon, we won't have a chairman of the JCS unless they push Tuberville into pulling back on this uh, ridiculous Millie's position. term is going to be up, and you've got uh, an approved nominee, but he's got to be confirmed by the Senate. Yeah. Well, and it's rippling out, too. It's not just it's some 32 percent of the nominations apparently right now are held in abeyance. But and it's not just lesser quality officers. It's the impermanence of it all. Right. You know, we just don't want the uniform military to be part of these political struggles. And that's where they're taking us with this NDAA. Well, it's always great to see you come more often. Uh, Good to see you. Thanks for everything you've done. Uh, good to be with you, Andrea.